Hey coders, welcome back to the Flask Mastery Series. I'm Goretti Golden and today we are taking the plunge into Flask, one of the coolest web frameworks in the Python universe. So get ready to create your very first Flask project and worry not as I will be explaining every line of code along the way. So grab your favorite code editor and let's dive in. Alright, first things first, open your Flask Basics folder in your code editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code here, but feel free to use your favorite code editor. So first of all, we are going to go ahead and activate our virtual environment. So go ahead and open your terminal for the IDE you are working with. So within your IDE's terminal, we are going to go ahead and type the command that activates our virtual environment. So we know that the virtual environment for our project is basics env, then backslash scripts, backslash activate. Because we know that the virtual environment folder is a subfolder of our working directory. So when you try to open it, you can see that we have the scripts subfolder and the script subfolder has this activate file. So we are trying to invoke this file by running this command. And this command works for those working with the Windows operating system. So take note of that. So press enter. So we can see that our virtual environment has now been activated. So having we activated the virtual environment, we are going to go ahead and create a new file within our working directory. So the file name is going to be app.py. And you know that for all Python files, the file extension is always py, which stands for Python. So the first thing we want to do is to import the Flask class from the Flask library with the fact that we are going to be creating a basic Flask application. So we shall therefore go ahead and write the first import statement from Flask, import Flask. So take note of the fact that Flask, this, the F is in lowercase, meaning that this is the, the library from which we are importing the class. So the class starts with a capital F. So you should take note of that. So with the fact that we are creating a new application, you always have to go ahead and create an instance from the class from the flask class so we therefore have to go ahead and create a new variable it can be up and we instantiate it with the flask class then we pass in the dash dash name variable so line three is our app instance So we can go ahead and commit it as creating the app instance. So for this project, I will actually assume that you already have a basic foundation of Python because currently the instance we are creating is one of the Python is object oriented programming features. So this variable that is passed in is a special Python variable that represents the name of the current model. So Flask uses it to know where to look for templates and static files. So this so this variable is also used to determine whether the Python script is being run as the main program or if it is being imported as a model into another script. And by default, it is always built in as a special variable in, in Python. So its value always depends on how the script is actually being executed. So we shall go ahead and create a root page of our application and we can create a Python function, for example. So the function will return a simple text, which can be like a literal, a string literal that returns an HTML heading flask master series. So this function will actually return this heading, 
But we know that for us to handle routing in terms of Flask, we always have to work with decorators. So for now, we are going to work with the app decorator, which starts with at app dot route. So take note that the decorator starts with the at symbol. So this decorator tells Flask that when a specific URL is accessed, it should invoke the decorated function and then return the result as the response to the client. So this method route on our decorator is a mapping between a URL and the function that should be executed when that URL passed in is accessed. So by default, it takes in two parameters. So the first parameter is always the path or the URL. And then the second parameter is always the methods parameter. So we are going to go ahead and define or pass in the path that we shall use to access our application by default. So with the fact that this is the root function, whenever we try to run our application and access it via a web browser, the index route is always backslash, meaning that you do not have to go ahead and uh, provide a, a user-defined route, for example, home. So whenever it is the root function, we can always pass in the path as a single backslash. And then the second parameter is always the methods parameter, which is always a list containing the methods that we are going to work with. So different methods like get, post, and etc. But by default, the route responds to the get request. So meaning that we do not always have to pass in this second parameter. So whenever we access or whenever we make a request to our application, by default, we expect to view. So we are expecting get requests, not post requests by default. Okay, so we are now going to go ahead and test our application by running Flask Run, then enter. And by default, we are always working with the development server that is built or that relies on the web server gateway interface that comes pre-installed within Flask. And by default, Flask runs on port 5000. So for us to access the application, we shall press control, then we right click, and we shall be redirected to our web page. So the web page is actually displayed by your web browser and as of now I'm using Google Chrome. So I want you to take note of the fact that the port is being rendered here and by default it is 5000 if you are working with Flask unless otherwise. And then this is the IP address of the machine that you are working with. So within the web page that is being displayed we are actually returning our heading, which is the string literal that we defined within our function. So whenever we access the web page, meaning that we are calling the function that we defined, which is the home function, and whenever this function is called through this URL, so I know you might be wondering like, hey, Gorty, how comes we haven't passed in that route, the backslash? Whenever it is the root path, which is backslash, the application always falls back to this default port. But cases whereby, for example, we go ahead and update the path from the backslash to maybe home, so slash home, and try to reaccess our application. So when you try to refresh, as of now, I think we are not seeing any changes. So for now, let's first try to stop the server, but we are going to learn how to work with automatic updates. So when we run, we can see that we are getting a response of not found. It says that the requested URL was not found on the server. If you entered the URL manually, please check your spelling and try again. So this is because we went ahead and updated our path to a user-defined path. So for us to access the application, we have to go ahead and update the URL to slash home and we press enter. 
So now we can see that we are actually accessing our web application. So we realize that we were manually stopping the server for new changes, but this is not the best way for us to code. So we are going to go ahead and work with the debug mode. So for us to be able to switch to the debug mode, we are going to go ahead and set the debug mode option through our terminal with the fact that this is a single project. So for now, we are going to switch to our command prompt terminal, then go ahead and set our virtual environment in a way that it is active. So basics m backslash scripts then activate so we shall activate our virtual environment so when we try to rerun our application using flask run you can see that the debug mode is off and we always have to manually close the server and rerun the server so that we can see our changes being updated so the first thing we are going to do is exporting our application through using this command set flask up and these are all in uppercase then we set it to the name of the file we are working with which is app then we shall also go ahead and set the flask debug mode to true by rewriting this key set flask debug and we assign the value to true then we press enter so when we run our application we expect to see that our debug mode is now true i think you can see that and you can also you can see that we are having restarting with start but we can also try to test this by updating our string literal to something like welcome to flask master series and you can see that whenever you make changes within your file the server is being restarted and when we try to refresh we are having welcome to flask master series we can also turn on the debug mode option by directly accessing our app.py file well, we shall check whether this script contains our main application instance and if it does we go ahead and run the file in a way that it runs our application and later on we turn on the debug mode option to true so for us to be able to test this we shall directly access our file by typing python app dot UI, then we press enter so whenever we make changes for example if we update this to part one we can still see that it automatically updates those changes and when we check out within our web browser we can see that this is up to date i hope you picked a leaf or learned something new from this session Thanks for watching and see you again in the next session where we shall be pushing our changes to our remote repositories.